Thanks for the presentation, Felix. I think what I'm going to say is going to be a really nice compliment to that. I'm going to warn you ahead of time, I'm really anti-slides, so they're usually really ugly, and there's not too many of them, which is a good thing. But I'm sorry if I make your eyes bleed, designers. OK, so before I start, can I get a sense of like who's in the audience? So if you consider yourself a product designer or a variation of that title, like UX slash UI designer, can you raise your hands? OK, about a, a half. Uh, brand or marketing designer? Brand or marketing? OK, pure UI designer. Just do UI, UI is your thing, OK? Pure UX designer? Oh, sorry, guys. Um, graphic designer or illustrator, okay, and front-end developer, okay, cool, uh, design researcher, wah, wah. <laughs> uh, product managers, all right, interesting. So it sounds like we have a pretty good, diverse group of people here. I'm a product designer at Algolia. So most of the things that I'll talk about today come from my experience as a product designer, but I think they apply to most designers here. As a product designer, for those who aren't really uh, you know, familiar or whatever with, with what I do, is I focus on the end-to-end -end user experience with our products. And that means everything from user research to the actual implement, not the implementation, I don't build stuff, but the actual UI. So um, it's a pretty broad skill set, and designers these days are expected to have a lot of skill sets. So I decided, decided to give this talk because Algolia is a develop, developer-led organization, and I've never worked in one before. And I find it really fascinating because um, in developer-led organizations, the awesome part is that developers tend to be really passionate about what they're building. They, especially in a company like Algolia, where developers build products for developers. So that means they know the end user quite well, they can empathize with the end user, and they put a lot of passion into what they do. And this is exactly what makes Algolia successful. There are some downfalls to working as a designer in the developer-led organization, and in general to developer-led organizations. Uh, one, of those organization, one of those pitfalls is that oftentimes the people developing the products think that they're designing for the user, thinking that the user is themselves. However, oftentimes they forget that their own experience with our products is already biased by their extensive knowledge and intimate knowledge of the product. So it's oftentimes hard to step away and understand what the experience might look like for someone who's um, seeing the product for the first time or is not as knowledgeable about it or for whom the product is not their primary life goal. So we do search, right? We're a search API and that means that People who use us typically want to plug search into whatever product they're building and move on and build the core product. Search is usually not a core, is, 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 a part, is an important part of their product, but it's not the main point of the product. So a lot of those contextual, um, a lot of that knowledge about the user sometimes gets lost. And as a designer, the downside to working in a developer-led organization is that it's oftentimes hard to find your place. And sometimes uh, design is perceived purely as an aesthetic discipline rather than a full, fully scoped or full uh, business position. And I tend to think that prog product design is actually a business role uh, rather than a purely creative role. So, um, I come from Silicon Valley. I worked there uh, before I moved to Paris in August. And the people who were perceived purely for aesthetic purposes were called pixel pushers. 
And coming from San Francisco, where design is a bit more mature, it's interesting for me to work in an organization that is, or trying to help an organization move from a developer-led organization to more of a design thinking oriented organization. Obviously, I'm not the one doing all this work. It's a work in progress. It's going to take a lot of time, and it's the work of the entire product team uh, to do it. But I would like to talk to you about a few things that we as designers can do to help move our organization from developer-led to design thinking inspired. And I'll explain what that means. If you work in an organization that has designers at the table, you're included early in the process, you know, uh, you help make product and strategic decisions on the product. It's a designer's product designer's dream, basically, and good for you. And I'm sure that you'll still pick some, some uh, tips up uh, on personal development from this conversation. So is there a problem, let's start just by asking, is there a problem with being a developer-led organization? And my philosophy on this is that there is a problem with being an anything-led organization, whether it's product-led or sales-led or marketing or design, because that means that there's an inherent imbalance in who's making decisions. And usually that leads to frustrations uh, around the whole company. So what a company would like to achieve is a healthy tension between the different disciplines and decision-making, decision-makers to create products um, that take into account business goals, user needs, and technical constraints, as well as sales goals and things like that. And I think the reason that you don't want to be a developer-led organization, but a design thinking organization, is because designers don't own design thinking. Design thinking is a philosophy that can guide an organization toward considering the entire user experience in their product development process and their experience development process. And incorporating the design thinking into the entire organizational philosophy actually build natural alliances between developers, PMs, and designers, which is, like Felix said, exa is exactly what we're aiming to achieve. So why should designers have a seat at the table? Like, why is it even important for us to fight for this or to hope that we're included in the decision-making process earlier on and not just considered pixel pushers or the, just the owners of the aesthetic domain? Well, I think it's because these days we are expected to be business partners. The times of designers sitting in this isolated room with beautiful art and posters and inspiration every, everywhere are kind of gone. Uh, it's the past of advertising agencies and graphic design. I think in a lot of ways, product design today is expected to help make design decisions and product decisions and to know the user and to know who we're designing for and, and why we're making certain design decisions. Uh, we're also are there to represent the user. I mean, if we're building solutions, we need to know what problems we're solving. And to know what problems we're solving, we really need to know who we're solving them for. In order to craft effective solutions, we need to have the full context, which means we need to be there earlier on when the problem is being identified in the first place. And if we build the right solutions, we make money for the company, and that's, that's good. Um, I've had situations in my personal experience where uh, I've been told, oh, well, we're in the technical uh, design phase right now. Like, we're not in the UX or UI phase right now, so let's just, like, do this. Let's, let's, talk, let's talk design later. And then what would happen is I would start working on the design component, which is usually the interface, and I would realize that the experience that I would like to craft for our users is extremely constrained by the technology. So the technical design is already dictating the front end or the visual design or the user interface design. Um, and in the end, I felt like I was putting lipstick on a pig, which is a phrase I like to use, um, where I wasn't able to create the experience that I wanted to, but had I been included in the technical discussions earlier and had we 
a broader idea of what, um, of what experience we wanted to create, then maybe the technical stack could have been shaped slightly differently to allow for that front end experience to materialize. And so what's a design thinking organization? So I think to start that conversation, we need to align on what design thinking is. And how many of you feel comfortable with the concept of design thinking? Okay, so design thinking is uh, kind of a jargon term these days. It was super popular in 2015. Um, and then, but, but I still believe in it, even though it's like everyone's taking design thinking classes and lectures and, you know, People at big corporations are like, le design thinking. And, um, but I actually really, really believe in it uh, because I think it's a state of mind and it's a way to approach problem solving. And the first and I think most important step of this is empathy. And Felix talked about empathy for your developers, but it extends to, of course, everyone you work with and most of all to the people you're building for. So empathize meaning knowing the user and then defining the problem, finding solutions, testing, iterating, blah, 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 you know all that stuff. So in an organization that's a design thinking organization, every single person involved in crafting the experience of the organization thinks in this way. Whether they're an office manager crafting the space for the employees or for the candidates that come to visit, or whether it's a salesperson crafting that outbound email or whether it's a designer crafting the product or uh, the interface, everyone thinks about what does it mean when the intended user of this service or product or email interacts with our brand. And all of that is design thinking. So what can we do to move our organization closer to design thinking? I'll talk to you about a few things that we've, we've tried here at Algolia. We're nowhere near design maturity or and nowhere near our goal but it's a really fun process actually and especially since we're working with really curious and talented engineers and product managers and so most people are really open-minded to the ideas and try new things so i highly encourage you to try these things uh, for yourself and for your organization so here's my little yoda moment or my long yoda moment so I think change management is inherently a really hard thing to achieve. And I find that changing yourself is easier than changing other people. So in any, or in any situation where change needs to happen, I first look at what I can do differently myself to affect the change and what I want to happen. So I really like this. Um, design report. It's called Future of Design and Startups 2017. If you haven't seen it, I highly encourage you to read it because it's very interesting in and it shows you trends and the directions in which the design industry is moving. And I'll use it for a few of my points today. So I think one of the most important things about getting a seat at the table is gaining trust from your partners, which are product managers, and developers, those are typically your immediate partners as a product designer. And in this report, um, they asked leading tech companies, what are the main skills that a designer needs to acquire in the next two, three years to be effective at their job? And who thinks, raise your hand, it was artificial intelligence? Who thinks it was uh, designing for chatbots and voice. Okay, who thinks it was uh, business skills? Okay, it's business skills. It wasn't actually a, a slew of those hard skills or Photoshop or anything or uh, anything like that it was business skills. And I think a lot of that just says that the expectations of businesses are for us not to just sit in a corner and making pretty things, but actually step up and hold our seat at the table when we're given it and prove that we actually understand that the product we're building is going to hit the business metrics that we're trying to achieve uh, and are going to drive the, sol the solutions are going to drive us toward business goals. Uh, my second point is actually, oh, and here's a quote from um, the survey on why does and when does design fail? 
and you'll read here it's when they don't have the holistic context, context for a problem, design and isolation, or are only focused on solving a user challenge but ignore the business need. So I thought that summed up pretty well why business skills um, are the top skill to learn. Uh, the second one is understand the technology. I'm not going to talk too much about it because Felix covered this point quite well, but to gain trust with developers. So developing business skills develops trust with PMs typically. Uh, developing trust with developers is really learning and being curious about their tech stack to the point where you can actually have conversations to, with them about your proposed solutions. So I think really effective designers can provide three solutions and confidently talk about which one they think will be the most technically constraining, which one is the easiest one, but you're trading off user experience, and have those conversations quite fluently so that the de developer trusts that you're keeping technology in mind when you're proposing solutions. And when you're arguing for something technically challenging, that they know you're not arguing for it just for design's sake, you're arguing for it knowing that, yes, it's gonna take a lot of effort from you, but it's a superior user experience. Um, and they might be eager to include you in technical conversations earlier on if they understand that you actually kind of understand what they're talking about. Um, a lot of designers are afraid to ask questions because they're, you know, a lot of us are perfectionists by nature. A lot of us are expected to bring solutions. And sometimes asking questions is scary and you might feel stupid doing it. But I think actually asking questions is one of the most effective ways to gain trust and to show that you deserve a seat at the table. So uh, when somebody comes to you with wireframes or saying, hey, can you make a solution to this problem? Or, hey, here's a napkin from lunch that I drew an interface on. Can you make this pretty? Um, one of the first things that I usually do is I start asking questions. Who are we building this for? Why are we building this? Uh, what problem are we actually solving? What outcomes are we hoping for? What metrics will we track to value the success of this design? What is our assumption? And these questions are not stupid. They're actually really valid questions because they'll inform your design. They'll highlight the holes in product strategy. I've actually had situations where I asked these questions and people said, well, actually, I'm not sure who we're designing this for. I think we're designing this for this person, but maybe it's this person. And it's like, okay, well, let's figure it out. And then it will also show your colleagues that you're likely being brought into the, pro into the process too late because you don't have all the context and that you deserve a seat at the table. And then finally, as a designer, if you want to really move your organization toward design thinking, think about how much you yourself exemplify design thinking. If you don't constantly show your designs to your users or to people outside of your organization for evaluation, then maybe you should start doing it. Or if you don't understand your users before you start building products, maybe you should build that empathy first. Because unless you exemplify it and unless you do it and include other people in the organization into the process, then it won't spread. Um, Okay, so those are the internal things we can do. And a lot of this is really hard work because you can't learn business overnight. You can't understand technology overnight. And you certainly can't start exemplifying design thinking. All of it takes practice and all of it takes hard work. So good luck. Uh, and then there are a few things we can do on the outside. Uh, within our organization to also help spread design thinking and get developers on board on the design thinking train and just following with the design process and including us earlier on. And one of those things is host a design thinking workshop. So whether it's hiring someone from the outside, a consultant to come teach your organization about the broader value of it, um, or whether you do it yourself if you're a small team, it could be really valuable. Uh, to get people excited about the concept and to actually give them the tools to use it in their uh, daily workflow. So let's say a developer, why does a developer need to know design thinking? Well, it might be valuable to them when they're thinking about the tech stack to think about who their final users are gonna be. Maybe it's even you. 
uh, and how you might actually build on top of that stack, uh, an experience on top of that stack. Uh, invest in research. So one of the things we did at Algolia is we hired a design researcher recently, and I think that's going to be a huge step toward building that empathy, not just within the design and product teams, but in, on the developer team. And also letting them understand where their assumptions about what the user experience, what the user wants and needs based on their biases is different from reality. And as our user base keeps expanding, we'll also tap into and understand other users like product managers and merchandisers and end users of search. And finally, is find an executive champion. So it's true that organizations that are successful in design thinking have someone at the top really advocating for it. So Google, for example, is a very traditional developer-led organization, or, or at least it used to be. And it wasn't until Larry Page started talking about the value of design at company meetings or talking about white space and actually heav heavily investing in hiring design talent and design leaders that Google transformed into a design leader today. I mean, material, they've released material design. They're pushing the boundaries in a lot of ways, both with technology and with aesthetics. And that's really a happy, happy world for a lot of designers. So if you have someone on the executive team who's open to this, try to convince them to think about investing uh, in this direction. So I talked a lot about which my experience at Algolia and being a developer-led organization, some challenges that it might create, but I think the overall experience here is that it's not negative. It's actually really positive because it's a wonderful opportunity for me to learn and for the entire design team to grow. Uh, as, as you saw, there are a lot of work ourselves we can do to become more effective partners to our developers and PMs. And so it's a really great uh, growth opportunity for everyone. And we're hiring. So <laughs> we're looking for a senior product designer. And if you want the challenge of helping make Algolia a more design-driven organization, uh, bring design thinking here. If you have a kick-ass UX skill set and you're pretty good at UI too, come talk to me and apply. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> yeah. Questions? Um, hi, uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, uh, in my society, we're starting to initiate uh, some uh, co consumption workshops mm -hmm. uh, with the different stakeholders. And uh, sometimes we we have some people who said, "Why are you asking me to do your job?" Um, <laughs> so, uh, have you uh, made this situation one time, and uh, have you some tips for um, uh, don't meet this situation again? Yeah, that's a really interesting situation, and. I'd say it's a, it's a tough one when you're trying to include people in the process and they're resistant to it. Um, I would just recommend saying, you know, I actually think that design is everyone's job and I actually think that it's not just my product, it's our product and I would love for you to give it a try and to, and to see if you can give, contribute some ideas to this process. I've, been, I've led some workshops too where people were quite resistant to the design sprint process or said, I don't sketch, or like, like literally sketch, not sketch app. And I was like, you know what? Like, it's okay. Like, we're gonna make ugly things and it's okay if your thing is ugly, just use boxes and arrows and let just, let's just get ideas out there. Uh, and say like, you know, if you think this is my job, then do you think that the entire product is not our job? Like, I think it, we all should be contributing to it and I would love your ideas. Just think of it, spin it positively. American. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Thomas Lin. Uh, I'm from BIM. Uh, I'm the only designer in my team in my startup. 
And I want to know um, how is organized the design team in Algolia and um, how many people are there and uh, what kind of profile are they? Yeah, so right now we have two design teams. We have the brand uh, design team and the product design team. So the brand design team is, uh, we are designers together uh, and we do a lot of things together, uh, but we sit in actually different parts of the organization. So the brand design team is under marketing, we're under product. So uh, that said, I think it's really important to have a cohesive design culture between all of the designers because our work influences the, their work and their work influences our work. So what we do is we have design critique once a week, all of us. Uh, we have uh, Creative Fridays once a quarter where all of us work, work on a project, a design project together. Um, and uh, more concretely on the product design team, we're three right now. And historically, our skill set has trended toward more UI. Uh, and we're trying to balance it out with a more UX. So I'm kind of in the middle. I, I would say I'm more UX leaning, but we're trying to balance it out a bit. Thank you. And how many people are you? On the product design team, we're three. And we oh. have a researcher. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions? OK, well, thanks.